configuration commands, just the configuration, that's all we're interested in. We're going to go and find the pieces that we want to copy. And in this case, we'll start with, let's copy the interfaces. This is my from, um, from XPath. Go down here, copy it. My to XPath, by the way, is going to be exactly the same. Mode merge, and there you go. If we go back up to our firewall, go to the interfaces, there they are. We do this with all the rest of our pieces, uh, one piece at a time. Often you can do a big chunk of it, like let's try the entire network, see what happens. Um, it just all depends. Um, this is a very, very useful command. You'll find yourself using it over and over. You can use this to copy from a firewall to a panorama or vice versa. It's all just a matter of knowing exactly what you want to copy from and what you want to copy to. And as you can guess, you can also do the slash API to a, to a panorama as well. Um, so here's our 2x path, bam. Our mode is merge. You have three different mode types. Merge is what you're going to use most of the time. So let's look here and see what else we have. So now we have the routers in place. We've got the, we don't have the zones, but we have the routers. We have a, a lot of stuff from, uh, from the network part. We're going to go ahead and see what we have in Vsys. Um, we're going to copy all this Vsys stuff. Notice Vsys is where the zone is. That's why we didn't get our zone. Um, actually, let's, let's just do here. We're going to copy the entire Vsys 1 of this file to the entire Vsys 1 of our firewall. So, load config partial from MT from the whole entire Vsys 1 to the whole entire Vsys 1 mode merge. Let's see what happens. And this is where you get to see some of the issues. Remember I said you can't have any on a NAT? That's why it's giving us this problem. Um, here it's complaining, let's see, Rule base, NAT, rules, well, let's see, not an allowed keyword, so it doesn't like the word AutoNAT DMZ app in the NAT rules. So this is where you'll have to go back and, and figure out what was wrong. We kind of skipped a few pieces in our migration, and that's why we're running into these into these problem problems here, but the basic um, idea was to give you the tools to do this migration. Let's see what we got here. We got our addresses, there's our address groups, there's all our services, there's our service groups. Let's see what we got here. We've got our security, we've got our NATs. Obviously we don't have all of them because of these issues. Those are things we'll have to go back and go ahead and fix um, and then do this again um, or, or just add in those specific rules. But uh, this is basically one of the ways to copy your rules in. Um, in our next migration, we'll copy with the API. We'll actually, um, we won't create an XML file. We'll just push the information right to the firewall. It's a much easier way if you have access to a firewall to output it to. So we will do that in the next one. So let's go through a, a few of these last um, caveats. Uh, if I, in case I haven't said it enough, like for like is essential to migration success. Truly, truly it is. Um, yes, you want to get the customer to next generation as quickly as possible, but unless the customer says to you, we really don't care if we go down and it's okay to have an eight hour outage, stick with like for like. It really is the best way. You're going to feel like you want to push, you want to push your limits on that, but you have time afterwards. The worst thing you can do is scare a customer by failing a migration. Um, 
Also be careful, I've done this to myself before, if you're creating a base configuration based on an empty config, make sure that config is really empty. Usually what I do is I try to clear it out via the GUI and then when I save the XML file, I pull it up into my XML editor and look through it and make sure it really is empty. Um, I told you I was going to touch on this, how to get around the VM firewall limitations. Well imagine you're migrating and you're going to put the uh, push the firewall rule set to a, uh, to a 7050. Well, 7050 has almost 100 ports. You obviously can't do it to a, um, to a firewall VM. But guess what? You can do it to a Panorama VM. Panorama VM has unlimited. Um, you can absolutely do it to that. So you do it to that, then when you give it to the customer and you start to push it to the actual 7050, no problem. Just do the right source XPath commands and the right destination XPath commands. Um, the other thing you want to want to do is, which is a good thing to do, is to add a log forwarding profile in advance of, of uh, saving off the XML. Uh, it can take forever to do it via the GUI to add log forwarding profile on the firewall itself to every single rule. I didn't cover that in this particular class, but I will cover that part in the next migration. Uh, same as with the log forwarding profile, it's best to also put a security profile on every rule because you're going to have to do it eventually and it's easier to do it when you can do a multi-edit. Um, and the other one I just wanted to make sure you remember is your older versions of ASA are going to qu require a lot more work on invalid services and NATs. They're also not going to do some of the, um, they will do the auto zoning but they won't automatically assume that the inside access list gets the inside source zone. A lot more has to be done by hand. And that is it for the training part of this and the next part will be a lab. Feel free to you know use the the slides and use this to, to as reference to figure out how to do the lab and uh, you should have folks helping you out with it. And thanks and I'm looking forward to um, teaching you uh, um, checkpoint migrations and juniper migrations. Thanks very much.